Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be comparing two very interesting numbers, two very irrational and even maybe way transcendental numbers because e and pi are transcendental numbers so it's kind of like a special group of irrational numbers uh, and the definition would probably be uh, if a number is um, not the root of a polynomial with integer coefficients then uh, it is not, uh, it is transcendental. Okay, I don't know if I made a good uh, definition, but so think about this. x squared minus 2 equals 0. The coefficients are all integers, and the roots are plus minus root 2. So plus minus root 2 are not transcendental numbers. They are algebraic. And if a number is not algebraic, I believe it's transcendental. So E and P are very special numbers. As you know, E is about 2.7 and pi is about 3.14. That's how much I know about those. And we're kind of exponentiating them together. And we want to find out which number is larger. Obviously, how could you define an irrational to an irrational power, right? When you can't really say what the irrational number is going to look like. But here's one thing you can do. You can approximate it, right? Obviously, we can define e to the power 2, e to the power 3. We could also define e to the power... Uh, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> Anyways, it's a shape. Uh, you can also define e to the power 2.5 or e to the power 5 halves. This can be defined as the fifth root, I mean the square root of e to the fifth, and so on and so forth. How do you make an irrational power? Well, you can approximate an irrational number using rational numbers. You can kind of write a series expansion, make it, um, you know, like a fraction, so on and so forth. Anyways, that's another story. Let's go ahead and see how we can compare these two numbers. I'll show you how we can compare them and then uh, also show you a numerical value that I got from Wolfram Alpha and we're going to finish up with a graph. Or we're going to finish up with the numerical values. I, I can't remember which one is which, but we'll finish up with those. <laughs> okay, great. So how would you compare these two numbers? First of all, notice that the base and the exponent are being switched around. So that should tell you something. Well, if I try to make up a function and use it to model these numbers, I wouldn't be very successful because the base and the exponent are not related. So for example, if you have something like, okay, I want to compare e to the power 2e and pi to the power 2 pi, then I could definitely go with f of x equals x to the power 2x because that would basically be uh, taking these values, right? But this is not the case. So how can I change these numbers so that e's are together on one side and pi's are uh, on the other side? Or I shouldn't say sides, but more like how can I get rid of the pi? So one thing you can do is basically you can raise both sides to the power something. For example, I can go ahead and raise both of these numbers, both of these numbers, to the power 1 over pi e. And let's see how that's going to help. Obviously, pi e is well defined. It's a real number. 1 over pi e is also well defined, so we can raise both sides to this power. Pi e is not 0, so 1 over pi e is well defined. Anyways, so when you do this, obviously, you're going to get e to the power pi times 1 over pi e. Pi is going to cancel out, and you're going to end up with e to the power 1 over e. Yes, that's what I was trying to get. I only want e's. I don't want any pi's mixed with e's. And here, so we can do this problem with e's. So the second one is going to be the e is going to cancel out. We're going to get pi to the power 1 over pi. So our problem is equivalent to comparing e to the power 1 over e versus pi to the power 1 over pi. Make sense? Now, this is a lot easier because we can use a function to model the behavior. This is going to be interesting. We're going to be doing a little bit, a tiny bit of calculus. Bear with me. Like I said earlier, calculus is just a tool that we use to understand the behavior of functions. Maxima, minima, increasing, decreasing, inflection points, so on and so forth. Okay, so let's go ahead and define f of x as x to the power 1 over x. So this f of x we are getting rid of because it's no longer valid, okay? Cool. This is our new f of x. Now, what do we do with this? We can go ahead and... 
evaluate our function at two points, one of which is going to be f of e, which is e to the power of 1 over e, and the other one is going to be f of pi, which is pi to the power of 1 over pi. So if I can understand the behavior of this function, if it's always increasing or decreasing, or if it has a ma minimum or maximum, then I can compare these two numbers. And I'll show you how uh, on the graph. Okay? But let's do a little bit of mechanics first. So we're going to go ahead and differentiate this. But before we differentiate, I want to write this as f of x equals. Now, x can be written as e to the power ln x. And I'm going to raise it to the power 1 over x. And now this can be written as e to the power ln x over x. This is what is so cool about functions that have a variable in their base uh, exp and exponent. Because if the base is a variable and the exponent is a variable, they're both variables, kind of like g of x to the power h of x, then you need to kind of get rid of this or that because you can't really differentiate. And getting rid of the exponent is nearly impossible, so we kind of have to get rid of the base. I mean, turning it into a constant like this. Make sense? So let's go ahead and differentiate it. This is e to the power of something. How do you differentiate e to the power of something? It's the same thing. Remember, the derivative of e to the u is e to the u times u prime. u prime comes from the chain rule, which is also called the derivative of the inside. All right? And if u is x, then the derivative of x is 1, so we don't have to write it. Make sense? That's called the chain rule. You see? It's easy. I told you. Now, we're going to multiply this by the derivative of ln x over x, but that is a quotient, and we have something called a quotient rule. What is the rule for, like, g over h, if you're differentiating the quotient of two functions, g prime h minus h prime g divided by h squared? Easy, right? You just differentiate one, multiply by the other, and do it again, subtract and divide by the square of the denominator. And this can be proven with limits, but we don't have to worry about it right now. How do you differentiate this quotient? The derivative of ln x times x minus the derivative of x times ln x divided by x squared. So let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. So f prime becomes e to the power ln x over x, and I'm going to simplify this in the next step. Multiply by... 1 over x times x is 1, 1 minus ln x divided by x squared. Actually, you don't really have to worry about this, like simplifying it, because this is not going to be 0, obviously, right? I mean, think about it. Where did this come from? It came from x to the power 1 over x. And as you should know, x to the power 1 over x cannot be 0, because if x is 0, 1 over x is undefined, so on and so forth. Great. So we're going to set this equal to 0, and that's going to give us ln x equals 1, which means x is equal to e. So we're going to make a graph of this function where x, f prime, and f. The only root for the derivative is e. And obviously, if x is greater than e, this is going to be greater than 1. So we're going to get a negative derivative here and a positive derivative here, which means our function is going to increase and then decrease, making a max at x equals e. Great. What does that mean? Our function takes f of x equals x to the power 1 over x is max at x equals e. So e to the power 1 over e is the largest value it can ever take. Therefore, pi to the power 1 over pi has to be less than this number. Make sense? So this is going to be the larger number if you're looking for the larger number. If you're looking to compare, this is the comparison. Let's go ahead and look at the graph real quick, as I told you earlier. At E, we have our maximum point. It's kind of hard to see here. Maybe I can zoom out a little bit. Tiny bit difference. It's kind of dropping here. And as you can see, pi to the power, and this is uh, this is basically pi comma pi to the power 1 over pi. And that's going to be less than uh, E to the power 1 over E. Make sense? Okay, great. So here's the numerical values. As I said earlier, the larger value is going to be... Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention... Because e to the power 1 over e is greater than pi to the power 1 over pi, we can go ahead and raise both sides again to the power pi e. And that's going to give us what we want. Pi e is positive. All is good. It's going to give us e to the pi greater than pi to the power e. As you can see here, it's slightly larger. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.